everybody. Sorry for last week. There were some technical difficulties, but we got everything worked out uh, for another week for the MoCoFootball.com weekly podcast. Back with the man, the myth, the legend, Damon Anderson. I'm your host, Kevin Grant. Uh, Damon, uh, before we get into the playoff matchups, because we didn't have the podcast last week, let's touch on stuff that we that we should have touched on last week. Uh, the QO Northwest matchup and, and you know, the, the ramifications of that. Now that the playoffs have started, what that means for uh, for QO and Northwest as, as far as seedings and the matchups with, you know, Northwest with Blair and QO with Clarksburg. And um, but, uh, yeah, started off touch on the, the, the QO Northwest matchup. And then we'll also touch on the. Gotcha. Yeah. And just wanted to let all of our, our fans and listeners out there now know. I'm getting your messages. I see your tweets. Uh, we apologize for the technical difficulties, but we got you guys covered for the remainder of the year. Um, one of the things we talked about last week was uh, the Quince Orchard Northwest matchup. And in a nutshell, basically what we said was QO demolished them. I mean, there was no no pretty word to describe it. Um, right. Two different animals, right? But yeah, it was an overall thrashing, um, and there was nothing fancy about it. It was old school Montgomery County football, you know. Maybe right. A little bit of misdirection put in here and there, but that's about it. I mean, a lot of times you cannot tell the story of a game by looking at the stats. This game is one of the ones where you can. I mean, over 300 yards given up. Right. And it was any every time Northwest hit a big play, which is their MO, regardless of down and distance, QO answered right back. Right. And that was in a nutshell uh, what we discussed about the Coin Torch Northwest game. We also said both teams can't, you know, rest on their laurels. There was still one game to play. Right. Yep. Northwest smash Springbrook forty-two to twelve. Great. And now we're we're in playoff mode. Everything that happened the previous ten weeks, we can throw that out the window. It's a it's a whole new season. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, you know, like you said, there, there's really not much you can really say about that game other than QO. You know, whip their butts up and down the field. <laughs> you know, and, and it's one of those situations where. Now it's looking the maritime. When when a team beats you up like that, um, there was really no scheme, no real thought process to the whole situation. It was basically we're gonna line up and we're gonna jump jam down your throat. And when you lose like that, it, you gotta look yourself in the mirror. And I think that those kids are champions. And I think that uh, the Springbrook game was a great was a great um, get right game for them to lead into the playoffs this week. Uh, they took care of business. Like, I, you know, everybody thought they, that they would. And uh, now we're looking at a situation where um, they're facing Blair in the first round. And, you know, I, I think that I, I don't I don't want to say it was a good thing for them to lose. Um, but if if anybody can kind of awaken your 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 flaws and, and highlight them, it's QO. QO has been a a. Uh, top power in this county for a while now and and you know they just showed again why they shouldn't be taken lightly and i think for a while we were kind of dismissing them as as a championship contender and i think what and and we me and you touched on this um you know for a few weeks now what what this showed us is that not only qo but clarksburg also 
we got to consider them now a, a championship contending team um, going forward in the playoffs. Um, and, and, you know, I, th- I think that's really exciting. I think that we, we legit got three teams over there that could really make a run. So that's 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 all. Actually, I like the result as far as that, Damon. Honestly, I like the result because, I, you know, it's good to have more teams. If Northwest ends up losing, that means we whether it's Clarksburg or QO, we have a team that's going to represent us in the right way. And and I'm, I'm just happy that we got those kind of teams in this county, man. The, the parity is, is awesome. We got great matchups all across the board. You know, um, North and it's and it's clear that Northwest is not just going to waltz all the way to the semifinals either. You know, yeah. so I, I think that it was I think I like the result. I like the result as far as that. But I still think that Northwest is in a good spot um, when it comes on to, um, you know, their matchups and what they're going to have to do to get to the semifinals. But it's definitely going to take more than what people initially thought. Um, talking about the playoffs and, and spots, one of the, the games two weeks ago that kind of had huge ramifications as far as playoff spots was the Sherwood Paint Branch game. Sherwood had a tough outing um, as far as, uh, you know, the result. But I think that Sherwood showed a lot of heart in the game. I believe the team um, and the program is going in the right direction despite the loss and despite missing playoffs this year. Travis Levy, um, after the, the paint branch game, um, he he just, I, I would like to say that was a coming out part. Um, he, uh, really sh- he really showed that he could be a star in this, in this county. He showed a talent that a lot of Sherwood people knew that he had for a while. And then he backed it up again um, with a three touchdown performance uh, versus Kennedy, where he where he um, really uh, went off in that game. So I think that uh, you know Sher was trending in the right direction. Sent, finished seven and three. Uh, you know, lost to three really good teams, and um, you know it's it's just tough that they're not going to make the playoffs this year. It you know that game they got down um, at half twelve to zero. They came back out at half and decided, hey, we're going to give Travis the ball. And they were rewarded. Travis really came out, and Paint Branch didn't know what to do uh, with Travis in the second half. Uh, they came out in more of a, a power set, uh, 32 personnel, 21 personnel, rather than 10 and 11. Uh, for, for people that don't understand that, you know, um, more tight ends and more fullbacks in the game. Um and they just gave it straight ahead, and Travis produced. They, I think they ran out of time, honestly. Paint Branch made some some really good plays, and I thought that Paint Branch showed some mental toughness during that game. But, you know, moving forward, Damon, into the next week, what do you think about Paint Branch losing to, to Gaithersburg right before the, right before the uh, playoffs, man? I mean, um, we haven't really gotten any firm reports of what might have happened. Um, we're we're kind of assuming that there might have been a situation where they're arresting players, or they were kind of holding back because maybe Mervo was was at the game, or whatever the case may be. But if they were playing th- full throttle, it's definitely an alarming loss going into the playoffs. What do you think about that match, uh, about that game, and what that means for their matchup versus Mervo going into the playoffs? Right. If if it came at any other point during the season, I, I would just throw my hands in the air and just be like, uh, I can't do it with Paint Branch. Right. But with it coming at the end of the, with this loss coming at the end of the season, and I do believe they had already wrapped up a playoff spot. The the only thing I can come up with is you know they rested a few starters. Um, they shrunk down the playbook just running basic plays right and you know this was the end result right because I cannot come up with any logic 
logical reason why a Gaithersburg team who up until that point had only won three games, right? One of which was a fourteen to two win over Magruder, right? Um, beating Pink Ranch. I mean, yeah. This is the same team that lost to Sherwood thirty three to six. Yeah, yeah. They lost to Wooten sixteen to twelve. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I haven't seen him down like that. Yeah. So I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna chalk this up as you know Payne Branch, Coach Neesmith, and all the co and the rest of the coaches over there know what they're doing, and this is not indicative of the Paint Branch we're gonna see next, uh, this Friday against Mervo. Um, historically speaking. Outside of Dunbar, Baltimore City teams have not, or are not on the, uh, let's just be honest, they're not the caliber of Montgomery County. Football. No, they're not. Um, and I fully expect Paint Branch to go up to Baltimore on Friday and come away with the easy win. This is assuming this is a Paint Branch that I've seen for the previous nine weeks. Right. Yeah. As a Montgomery County fan, um, overall, I, I take a certain pride in watching our teams go to other areas and just bank. Yeah. Teams. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, and in the Baltimore circles, Mervo is one of the top teams. Yeah. Um, I hear the chatter. I see it. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, eh, they can't hang with Pink Branch. No, they can't. They shouldn't be able to anyways. But, like I said, the only thing that gives me pause is that Gaithersburg lost. And I'm assuming it was just a case of resting starters and showing minimal plays to the scouts that everybody knows was out there. Right. Um, The scouts from around the state have been in and around Montgomery County for at least the past four weeks. Right. Especially at Paint Branch games. Right. So, You know, that's that's what I'm doing too. I, I've asked a few people about it. I, I couldn't really get any firm answers on it. Um, I'm I'm hoping to maybe talk to Coach Neesmith about it at some point um, this week. But I mean, if if they did go full throttle, Damien, it's one of the most puzzling losses I've I've seen in the last five, six, seven years. I mean, to to go full throttle versus that kind of team right before the playoffs and lose would be pretty that that would be pretty embarrassing pretty pretty puzzling like you know like you say a head a head scratcher yeah that that's that's the definition right there um but i'm just going to assume like you said resting starters stringing the playbook probably brought up some jv kids whatever um you know i i mean i know it sounds like we're taking away credit from from Gaithersburg, which we kind of are i mean that's what we're doing but, I mean, they only got themselves to blame for that. They're, what, they won three games the whole season? Yep. I still got Paint Branch coming out of that region, and I still got Paint Branch going to the semis. So, that that's just, just the bottom line. I'm I'm going to throw that game out completely um, and uh, just move forward, honestly. I'm, I don't, I'm not even going to look at that game. I'm not. That might be wrong of me, but... I'm just I'm just gonna block that out of my mind. Completely. And as far as Mervo goes, it looks like they run what um a lot of people are running now the the spread read option. Try to get some athletes in, in space and but 
it doesn't look like the execution of that. I don't think that it's necessarily crisp enough to <laughs> to um, challenge Paint Branch in any kind of way. Now, I mean, they're not. I don't think that they're going to be able to hang with the Paint Branch when it comes on to um, just overall what what Paint Branch can bring to the table. And I, I, I don't. I don't think this is going to be much of a matchup, man. I, I, you know, breaking this down X and O wise, looking at Mervo on film, I just don't see them being able to stop um, Cedric and Daryl Hill uh, from doing what they got to do. Paint Ranch got so many weapons on the outside. I'm sure Mervo is going to have some talented athletes that can match up with some of those kids, but I don't think that they're going to be able, from a coaching standpoint, to to deliver the kind of game plan to to completely shut uh pain branch down so um i got pain branch winning that game um 35 7 and getting out there with a cool cool nice win and coming back to moco you know smiles on their faces chilling around and waiting for the next opponent man because i I, like i said i don't don't think marbo's going to stand a chance honestly agreed i mean Outside of Dunbar, but that's when they were a 1A school. So even, even, even with that being said, overall, I, 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 I can't see Paint Branch losing this game. I have a similar score, uh, 38 to 6. Okay. The next game I want to talk about, Damon, is. I, I'm going to be honest with you, I've been dreading this matchup for. Since since the season started, we have Raekwon Gray coming to MoCo again. Again, <laughs> for the third year in a row. Okay, <sighs> let me let me just say this. I think that the masses is, is is a better team than Urbana is. Right, I I really do. I think that Damascus overall is one of the best teams in the state in in the polls in our in our least six rankings, but. Damon, I, I gotta I gotta be honest with you. This has really brought some cause to pause as far as me just saying, oh, they're gonna they're gonna get to the second round, no problem. Because this this kid and now Ligonor did do a pretty good job on bottling him down and, and Ligonor ended up winning that game. So there's a formula. All those kids on defense are going to have to have a, a, a the, the game of their lives, man. This kid's coming in full throttle with confidence that he can do this and pull this off again. Now, with all that being said, I still got Damascus winning. I got Damascus winning 24-21. I think that Damascus is going to make the necessary stops to pull this one out. And honestly, I think that Damascus might struggle with Urbana more than some of the other teams in 3A just because of what Urbana presents. Um, you know, in the running game and everything like that with Raekwon Gray. So, I think if Damascus gets past this game, I think they're going to be in good shape. Honestly. I really do. And I think I, I got them getting past this game, obviously, and going on, doing some big things. I, we'll get to that in later weeks. But, um, yeah, I got them getting past this game, 24-21, hard-fought game. What do you think about this game, and, and what do you think about Mr. Gray coming back to MoCo for another year? Yeah. This time, he has one of our most beloved coaches. <laughs> yeah. Right behind him, in a um, first-year coach at Urbana, Coach Mack. Yeah. Uh, the ex-coach um, of the Quinn's Orchard Cougs. Now, let me let me ask you a question. Do Do you think that we should give Mack the LeBron treatment? Um, oh, absolutely. When when, when um, he comes back. Um, I want everybody in Damascus to boo Coach Mack, <laughs> not only for. <laughs> Right, right. But, you know, also because Coach Mack has been a thorn in the side of Damascus for, you know, several years now. Right. 
I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I'm pretty sure the last handful of meetings, uh, Damascus versus Quinn Sorcher when Coach Mack was at the helm, Coach Mack came out on top. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So that, that was not only do you yeah. have to deal with Ray Gray, who has proven to be, you know, the, uh, the Hornet killer, if you will. Yep. But now he has, you know, one of the best coaches in Montgomery County history in tow. So yep. It, it, it's a double whammy. If there's a if there's a person that knows how to to beat Damascus, it's Coach Mack. And now you throw Ray Gray on top of it. it it's going to be a tall order. However, based off of what I've seen of Damascus this year, and they are hands down the best team in Montgomery County. I don't even know why there's even a, de- a debate about that. Right. Um, I expect them to put together a game plan to limit Ray and they got enough firepower on offense to come out on top. I mean, the two best running teams Damascus faced this year was Clarksburg and Quince Orchard. Right. They held Clarksburg under 100 yards total. All of their players, 100 yards, under 100 yards total. Yeah. Um, if we go back game, I do believe Quince Orchard barely got over 100 total, yeah. but it wasn't by a lot. Um, right. So, on the defensive side of the ball, I, I think that Damascus can put it together. Um, offensively, like you said, with Christian and Funk, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think Urbana can handle that. Right, um, right. My final Okay. It, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a physical game, no doubt. Um, but I think Massachusetts is gonna put together longer, sustained drives than Urbana can, and Damascus will finally get that monkey off their back and send Coach Mack home, thinking, "Why did I ever leave <laughs> the, the beautiful, <laughs> gorgeous pastures?" Of Quince Orchard for this. <laughs> right. I'm just kidding. I love you, Coach Mack. Right. Don't send me crazy emails. Right, right. Well, I mean, I think that um, I think that that's a that's a good score. Um, I think that you bring up a good point, and, and seeing what Quince Orchard and, and Carlsberg has done to Northwest. Uh, that's not that's not a small feat at all to hold those two two teams under 100 yards as as we've seen. Uh, those two teams can run against just about anybody. Um, so that's a good good little feather in Damascus' cap going up against uh, one of the better running backs you've seen in a while. I definitely have confidence that Damascus is going to win this game. It, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see what Damascus comes up with. Are they going to just say, "Hey, we're going to load up the box and not care about anything else" and just kind of tee off or, you know, what what kind of game plan are they going to come up with to stop this kid? So, you know, we'll see going forward. Next game that we're going to talk about is Quince Orchard facing Clarksburg. Clarksburg this time um, going to, to, you know, the Cougar Dome to face Quince Orchard. Um, Clarksburg obviously had a really good showing versus Northwest. QL obviously beat Northwest. Um... I believe that this game is going to really come down to whether or not QO can play the field position game like they like to do um, and and get those short fields. I think I think it's going to be another close, low-scoring game. Both teams love to run the football. Um, I think the team that plays the field position game the best and doesn't turn the ball over, I think that's the, going to be the team that comes out on top. Uh, last game... Clarksburg and QO had some crucial turnovers. And I think that that had a lot to do with the outcome of the game. I think whichever team um, can can get some kind of passing game going also can benefit, um, you know, whether it's play action fake and things like that. Um, 
Joe Nassie running the football is going to be a dangerous thing for QL also. I don't know how many running quarterbacks there are in the county, actually, uh, that, that of prominence anyways. Uh, so this will be something that QL hasn't faced in a while. So I, I think that it's going to be something that QL is going to have to deal with. But all in all, I, I got QO winning um, a very, very tightly contested game all the way up to the end. I got QO pulling away at the end of the game, Damon. I got him going 21-10 and, um, you know, having a big fourth quarter running the ball after they wear down that the kind of smallish Clarksburg line and um, coming over that victory. So what do you think about uh, this game and, and the matchups that are going to be occurring on Friday? Yeah, this is, um, even though Quinn Torcher, you know, two weeks ago was coming off one of the, the biggest wins of the year by beating down Northwest, it, it kind of, you know, it, it's almost a double-edged sword by them moving into the number one spot in the region. They are welcomed uh, with the team that nobody wants to play in the playoffs, and that's the Clarksburg Coyotes. Right. Right. Depending on which pole you're looking at. Right. Um, and they weren't blowouts by any stretch of the imagination. Right. Um, the, the QO and Northwest games that uh, Clarksburg lost, they were literally in it until the final minutes. And only the Masses game was uh, over before the, you know, the two-minute warning, so to speak. But they still... Still, you know, they still let Damascus know they are not to be trifled with. Um, right. With that being said, um, both teams have vastly improved since week one. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's going to be an inter- interesting game to watch regardless of who, whoever comes out on top just to see the growth of the kids on both teams to see how far they've come from week one until now. Yeah. Um, but like you said, um, I'm, I'm seeing the game play out the same way. Um, after that Northwest game, that was a Quinn Sorcher squad I had not seen all year. It, there's a point in every team's football season, well, not every team, most football team seasons where things start to click. Right. And it, it takes some time. And on the coach's side, it's, it's equally as hard. Um, you don't know what motivates these kids. Um, some kids respond to, you know, yelling and cursing. Right. Some kids respond to being coddled. Right. And you, have, you have to find that delicate balance to try to get the most out of your players. And from my perspective, I think both the kids and the players hit that, that, that focal point in the Northwest game. Right. I see that being the biggest factor in the rematch versus Clarksburg. I fully expect it to be a, a strong, hard, fought, physical game. Just this is exactly kind of game I love to watch. Right. Um, two very strong running games, two solid defenses, but Quince Orchard at this point in time just has too many horses. I made the mistake in week one. By picking Clarksburg, um, and I heard about it. Yeah, and I'm still hearing about it. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not gonna make the same mistake twice. I learned from my mistakes. Okay. So I'm going with Coin Orchard. I have a little bit, a slightly lower scoring game. I have Coin Orchard winning 24 to 15. Okay. That, that's that's a solid score too. I think that Clarksburg for them, if if they're gonna go far in this playoffs, I think Tavis Holland is the most exciting player, um, the MEP, but the MVP, the most valuable player, it's gonna be Tyler Flazer, because he's gonna be the guy that is gonna be getting those tough yards up the middle, um, establishing attitude. 
for for Clarksburg, and he's going to be the one that really wears down the defense. With whoever team, whatever team that you're talking about, uh, he's going to be the guy that want, is going to be, you know, the one that makes the defense want want to tap out of the game at some point. And if he's able to get going, and and able to put a number on on QO in some kind of form or fashion, whether it's uh, it doesn't have to be long plays. It, it could be just be really bruising four or five yard gains. If he's able to do that, I think that it could be a little bit of a closer game than a lot of people are anticipating. Um, but I just think that QO right now, they're very confident. Um, like you said, they, they're used to going up against a strong running game in practice. I think they're just they're they're gonna be um really really up they're gonna be more up for this matchup and more um uh they're gonna match up better with Clarksburg than the Northwest did. So I, I I got them I got it being a good contest for three and a half quarters, but I I got Quince Orchard scoring uh two late touchdowns to ice the game. Um, you know, making it twenty one ten and uh, you know, going on to the to the next round. Two games left here. Um, the next game that we're going to talk about is Blair, for the first time, going to the playoffs, going to the defending congratulations. congratulations, going to the de- defending champions' house, trying to pull up the upset of maybe the century. <laughs> um, what do you think about this game? I like, like you said, congratulations to Blair. Blair had a great season. Um, for them to make the playoffs. It's huge for their build, for their building process. A lot of people pegged them as a team of destiny um, before the season, and they kind of lived up to that. And now they're in the playoffs, and, and, and you know, there's nothing more dangerous than a team with nothing to lose, man. And they have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Uh, they're able to pull this off. I mean, their their program is going to take quantum leaps um, towards possibly, dare we say, it, state championship contention. Um, so they, they've done a great job. Coach Fields obviously has, um, Northwest ties, uh, winning a state championship with them as defensive coordinator. So I think it's going to be an emotional game for him, for him. I think they didn't come out. I think Blair is going to come out with a great game plan. They're going to come out firing, but at the end of the day, I got, I got Northwest winning pretty large, putting up 44 points. Got, got, uh, Blair putting up 14 points. And I got uh, Quince Orchard and Northwest uh, seeing each other again in the in the second round. Agreed. Um, like you said, it was an awesome, <clears throat> excuse me, awesome, awesome season. Blair's had an awesome season. Uh, my hat's off to the kids and coaching staff. Um, right. First playoff appearance ever. And uh, my, my son's grandfather is a, a 1940s graduate of Blair, and <laughs> he was telling me in his tenure, Blair wasn't even good. So, Dang. what the heck? This shows you how <laughs> good this team is and how big of a deal it is um, for that for Montgomery Blair High School. Right. Um, so, my hats off to them. You guys had a great, great season. But yeah, welcome to the big leagues. Oh and, yeah. Your reward for this great season is on the road in the black hole against the defending state champions. Right. A defending state champions who has a chip on their shoulder now, a chip that they haven't had all year. Right. Um, due to their loss to Quince Orchard a few weeks back. So, um, Blair hasn't faced a, 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 an opponent near the caliber of Northwest. Right. The toughest opponent that they faced was Paint Branch, who was blown out by Northwest. 
Right. Um, personally, I expect Blair to try to replicate what Clarksburg and Quince Orchard did. Yeah. By attempting to pound the ball. Yeah. But I, I, I just, they just don't have the horses up front to pull that off for four quarters. Yeah. They may, they may break off a few big runs here and there, but in terms of an entire game, I expect them to abandon that that scheme and try to start airing it out, which I think plays into Northwest hands. Um, I don't expect this game to be close. Um, I expect Northwest to come out on top 38-7. to seven. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I would have. Part of me want would, would love to see Blair pull off the upset, mm-hmm. um, just to silence some of the doubters. Mm-hmm. But in a similar vein to a couple of other schools in the county that did not make the playoffs, I think this is the beginning of a great thing for the Blair Blazers. Um, right. We may look back on this three to four years from now and say this was, you know, the beginning of something really great at Blair. But right. As it stands right now for this year, um, I think this Friday is going to be the end of the road. What is a great season for the Blair Blazers. And, you know, even if they lose on Friday, they can hang their hat on, you know, for a very long time and say, you know, they're the best Blair team in school history. And for those of you that don't know, Blair is extremely old. Yeah. Extremely. It's one of the oldest schools in Montgomery County. Yep. Um, but yeah, this is just uh, the first step for Northwest in trying to pull off a rare repeat. Um, and what, in my opinion, is Right. Um, I think we have three legit title contenders in Clarksburg, QO, and Northwest. Right. But um, you know, it is what it is. This is this is the playoffs. Like I said before, everything that happened the previous ten weeks you can throw it out the window. Which gives Blair a glimmer of hope. Yeah. Um, but I, I just don't see it happening. Yeah. At least not this. Yeah, I I think that um outside of the one game versus QO, and honestly, I think that this kind of hurt uh, Northwestern a little bit uh, in, in a way, but outside of that one game, Northwest has pretty much mastered the um, get you up out of there technique <laughs> pretty, pretty well. Um, they, they see your weakness. They understand your weakness. And they take a knife and they stab at your weakness until you just die. And that's that's pretty much what Northwest is all about. And, and the reason why I say that kind of hurt them versus QO was because early on in that game, they could have punted away the ball, played some field position, and um, they decided to go for it. Uh, I believe it was a fake punt, I believe. Right. And they ended up not getting it. And that gave uh, QO some pretty good field position in the onslaught <laughs> ensued from that point on basically I still think that Q probably would have done what they did without that but um, that definitely helps when you get that kind of field position um, early on in the game especially when you just turned over the ball a few plays earlier so but with that being said Northwest has mastered the get, a, get you up out of their technique and I think that just like I think you hit the nail on the head. I think they're gonna come out. They're gonna try to hit a gap plays. Um, you know, right up the middle, a gap, b gap plays. Um, maybe some zone stretch stuff. Maybe I don't know. Try to get the ball on the edges for that for that other reason. Um, but I think that Blair after the first quarter is gonna look up and probably see anything between. 21 to 28 points already up on the board 
And at that point, they're going to have to make a decision. Do we continue with this game plan that we have right now, even though we've seen it work multiple times with for multiple teams, or do we abandon this and start, you know, airing the ball out? I think they're going to try to start airing the ball out. If they do, they're going to get into a world of trouble, and that's going to lead to a, a pretty significant blowout, in my opinion. We're going to transition over to the last game that we're going to be talking about. Poolsville is a team that has quietly been one of the most consistent programs in this county. Um, they are um, a small town school. They they love their football out there. And this is, you know, uh, uh, you know, now in the last three or four years, they've, they've made the playoffs a few times and they're building something over there. Now they're facing Liberty. Um, it's at Poolsville, which is huge uh, home game in the playoffs for Poolsville. Uh, what do you think about this game, Damon? And, and do you think that that Poolsville is gonna in this game get some momentum going forward? Um, first off, hats off to uh, Poolsville Falcons for another great season and getting into the playoffs. Right. Um, as with any Montgomery County team, I'm extremely happy to see their their season extended. Um, with that being said. Liberty, I feel, is a slightly better team than Poolsville. And that's strictly based off of the losses of both teams and who they were to. Right. Um, Liberty has three losses just like Poolsville. Except for Liberty, two of the three Liberty losses are against what I consider decent teams. Um, Westminster, right. which, which is um, a 3A team um, known for throwing the ball all around the field and is a tough matchup for anybody, regardless of a record, because it's an offense. Well, I don't know. I've, I've seen that thing up close in person, man. I don't, I don't care to see it ever again. <laughs> yeah. Regardless of who you are, it's a tough, it's a tough offense to, to game plan for, especially for smaller schools. You see that type of offense. More often in 3A and in 4A, but not so often at the 2A and 1A level. Right. And even though Westminster had, had a down year, um, six and four for them, um, they're still a quality football team. Right. Another one of their losses was to South Carroll, which uh, is a team up in Carroll County, um, another two, 2A team, who is also seven and three. Right. Um, Sure. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll, we'll find out this Friday when they match up against Ligonor. Absolutely. Poolsville's other loss against Catoctin, um, a six and four team. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I don't know about that one. Not you that know? great. Yeah. Yeah. It was a loss and it was a bad loss. 30, yeah. Thirty to thirteen. Yeah. That's not good. Um, we'll figure out how good they actually are this Friday also. And their third loss. Right. Even though they beat Poolsville, um, it's just one of those things where they didn't have enough points. They might have played a. They definitely played a tougher schedule than Poolsville. 
Right. But um, just going off the the common opponents and how each team lost, Liberty seems to be the slightly better team. Okay. Now, I said all that, mm-hmm. and I'm still picking pools. <laughs> um, <laughs> yep. Till we die, man. Till we die. that score um i got poolsville winning a, a knockout drag drag down game 14 to 7 i think that they're going to represent moco well i really do and, and i'm excited for them it's a home game in the playoffs um and i think that the community is going to come out shut down the town and and support those boys out there um on friday and and i think they're going to respond and i think they'll respond with a win last thing that i want to i want to talk about damon is um you know, the regular season's over. Uh, we had some great performances. Tell me, in your opinion, your your regular season MVP, if you will, and, you know, a, a memorable uh, performance that you remember from, from, the, from the regular season. All right. I'm going to start with my MVP and just get this out of the way because I know it's going to make a lot of people upset. And they're going to say, blah, blah, blah. Okay. My man. Right. Been running that Rockville offense for several years now. Right. I don't care who it is. Nobody has put up over 3,000 yards this year. Right. Nobody. I mean, the kid is a baller. Right. Um, I guess I could give it to Mark Pierce. Mm Mm-hmm. He would definitely be my runner-up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this is just one of those instances. In my mind, if you put Chuck Reese on Quince Orchard, Northwest, Paint Branch, Clarksburg, I mean, there would be no question. Right. He, he, he's, uh, oh, no, nah, with, the, with those numbers, team. if he was putting up those numbers at, at one of those schools, there, there would be no question. There, there would right. be. And, and being eight and two or whatever, you know, seven and three, whatever the case may be, yeah, there would, there'd be no question. Yeah, but it's hard for me to ignore. He, he he literally carried that team. For yeah. Two years running now. Yeah. I mean, three thousand plus yards. I don't care if he played the Sisters of the Poor <laughs> every week. That that that's a strong strong performance for the season. Right. Green in his game against Northwest. 
Yeah. Putting up 200 plus yards on the ground. I mean, it was it was ridiculous. Yeah. For me, um, I mean, there, there's a lot of kids. Uh, Jake Funk is a guy that I think definitely deserves consideration for player of the year. Um, you know, there's there's a lot of guys out there that I believe that definitely deserve to be in that category. To me, when, when I look at most valuable player, I'm, I'm looking for the person that if you took this guy off their team, they would um, they wouldn't be – anywhere close to what they were. And, and that's why um, I do definitely hold that that Chuck Reese, and, and anybody that's listening to this, you got to understand that, you know, if you take Chuck Reese off of Rockville, you, you're not talking about 8-2 or 7-3 or whatever they ended up being. Um, but for me, I'm going to go with Agent Phyllis Platt over, over at Seneca Valley. Um, Interesting. What they ask that kid to do week in and week out um, it's very similar to what they ask Raekwon Gray to do week in and week out. And this is a sophomore. Um, we take Asian Felix Platt off that team. Um, <laughs> I think that they, we're talking about Seneca Valley losing to, to Wheaton, losing to Rockville. And could you even imagine that? No. I mean, no. honestly, that that's what we'll be talking about right now. We we'll, we we'll, we we could legit be talking about, you know, them losing. I'm I'm. You're talking about maybe five and five, maybe. You know, uh, they definitely would have lost to uh, Sherwood. Every single time this kid had to really step up and and um, you know, perform, he did and um. He, to me, was the most valuable player to his team. Now, I'm not saying he was the best. I, I still think that the best player in the county is is Mark Pierce. Um, and, and and also Mark Pierce is, I, I could consider him one of the top two or three um, most valuable players along with um, Chuck Reese and, and Adrian. Um, but I think that Mark Pierce is on a team that, if if he if you took him off of it, they'll definitely not be what they what they are right now. Um, but I don't think that they would be a sub five hundred team and losing to Blake all of a sudden. You know, you understand what I'm trying to say? Um, they got enough talent on that team, even without him, to still. I don't know if they would be a playoff team, but they'll still be a pretty good team. Um, I don't uh, without Adrian Fields Platt on that team. I I don't know who convinced Adrian to not go to private school, but um, you know those memes <laughs> talking about you're the real MVP with Kevin Durant, right? You know whoever that is, you're the real MVP. <laughs> whoever convinced Adrian Fields Platt not to go to that private school, you're the real MVP. You know because that decision right there. Might have saved some jobs, changed the course of direction of the program. I mean, when you look at what he had to do last year, right? Look at the shoes that he had to fill. He had to fill, I, I, I mean, and people didn't talk about this enough. He was replacing Tuz Joppy last year uh-huh. and did a great job at it. 
And this year he comes back and he lo- they, they lose a bunch of seniors. Last year was supposed to be a great year, everything like that. And he steps up and he carries that team to an eight and two record. The only two losses are to the arguably the top two, top three teams in, in the count in the county, which is Damascus and, and Northwest. Now they got blown out in those games because I, I don't I just don't think that um he has the help around him right now. But I just think that right now he if you take him off that team, like I said, you're talking about them possibly starting out 0-2, 0-3 maybe. Um they I, there were there were games where he bailed them out, man, in the second half. Um as far as performance, um you know, I'm going to have a homer pick on this one. When you're down 12-0 at a halftime to a really good team in Paint Branch, your season's on the line. Um, you don't win this game. You're you're going to miss the playoffs. You could easily roll down and die. And you're a sophomore, and your coach comes up to you and says, we're going to ride you out. We're going to... We're going to put the game, the ball in your hands, and the game's going to be in your hands, and we're going to expect you to, to ride us to the promised land. And you start and you perform and you deliver on that. Um, That, to me, was very impressive when I watched uh, Travis Levy versus Paint Branch. Uh, Travis Levy is obviously the running back for Sherwood. Um, He, I mean, that, that, that was a clutch performance, man. And he gutted it out. He was playing both sides of the ball, being a being a monster on both sides of the ball. Um, he he didn't quit, and, and unfortunately, Sherwood came up short. But he showed me something that that was one of the better performances. You you talked about how um, you know Mark Green celebrated, you know, twenty five yards out from the from the end zone. And I remember there was. 35 I'm sorry 35 yards out, out of the end zone I remember there was there was um there was a one there was one play I think it was I think it was Travis's like third score that it was getting kind of ridiculous and he he ran past everybody on paint branch and he started doing like the the little crucifix thing you know um at like the the 15. And um, he, well, he was running into the end zone. And I, I remember if you watch the film, like the uh, the, the the camera starts shaking and, and everything like that because it was that kind of momentum swing. And it, it, I mean, I remember the stadium just went wild at that point. And it was it was a it, it was really a surreal thing because we've been waiting for this kid because we knew it was dormant. You know, it was just kind of like a bunch of talent that we were looking at. We knew it was there. But we were just kind of waiting for that for that beast to kind of explode, and and when it did, it was a spectacular thing to watch. It was, it was, it was, it was amazing to watch. It was great, it was great theater to watch this 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 young kid grow up in front. He it literally looked like somebody was growing up in front of your eyes, you know, on both sides of the ball. So, anyways, Damon, that that's all there is to uh, for this week. Is there anything that you want to um, say or shout out anybody uh, before before we move on? No, that's about it. Um, just uh, congratulations to all the teams that made the playoffs, those that didn't. Um, I'm positive each and every one of you gave it your all, and you have nothing to be ashamed about if that's the case. And uh, hope to see everybody out for the playoffs this weekend, and go Mocha. Okay, everybody. Again, this is playoff week. This is when, when the real season starts. Let's go. And uh, thank you for, for listening.